Hi everyone, uh, we're in Ruse today um, and we thought we'd take a look at some of the sort of Soviet architecture and various things that are still here uh, from communist times in Bulgaria. Uh, we've recently been watching a channel um, that we, we, was one of our favourites. Uh, it's basically um, Bold and Bankrupt. Um, it's a really cool channel, you should definitely check it out and subscribe to it. Um, basically, it's a guy from the UK who travels around ex-Soviet countries, I think primarily Russia, but also places like Kyrgyzstan and Azerbaijan and all sorts of places. And he takes a look at like what the Soviet legacy is, you know, what the locals think, and also takes a look at some of the buildings and the kind of mosaics and other things that have kind of been left behind after Soviet um, rule kind of ended. And um, we thought we'd have a look around in Bulgaria in the local area that we're in before we go back to the UK um, because there's quite a lot of Soviet things that you sort of see dotted around you don't really they kind of blend into the background and you just sort of realize what it's all about so uh, first one I thought we'd come to because we're in the center of Russo um, is this sort of municipality building here which is like kind of a brutalist style sort of design and um, yeah so it's basically like the council building I think and uh, yeah, very sort of Soviet brutal style. And um, quite a lot of the buildings are, to be honest with you. There are a lot of older buildings as well that probably predate uh, Soviet times, but a lot of uh, socialist style buildings about. And um, yeah, right in the centre of Russo, really. And there's obviously statues, and there are you know lots of old sort of um, yeah, just legacy things looking around. So we we're gonna sort of. You know, do a little bit of a video, looking around, seeing what we can find, see what's in the local area that kind of is here. I mean, they've got the big Bulgarian flag, obviously. Uh, I mean, Bulgaria wasn't part of the Soviet Union. They were kind of aligned with the Soviet Union, I think. Um, but yeah, look at this building. It's just, it's phenomenally sort of striking, really. Um, but at the same time, kind of blends into the back of the city. And yeah, so we're going to take a look around. Um, probably like Ruse at first not sure if we'll go to some various other places as well just see if we can find some sort of relics from the Soviet times and 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 you know see if we can show them to you I don't think this uh, market is Soviet but um, just shows you that like, there's more to Ruse than what you actually realize you kind of think of it as like a small little town area like the main sort of square of the town and stuff but actually there's a whole like market area there's whole big park areas loads of big streets with restaurants and stuff in and uh yeah so it's pretty cool just just to look at like what russe has to offer um because we often forget because we only tend to go into the center of the town that it has all these places so yeah it's pretty cool really so yeah if you need a coat or a bag or something to that effect and it's pretty cool it's got loads of loads of spots so we're walking up to a main park now like a big park area where we're thinking that there's a, a statue of some kind in there so we're gonna go up to the park and see if we can find this statue which which should be a, Sto a Soviet statue but yeah just to show that you know there's lots going on here I don't know if this is like here all the time or whether it's just on a weekend or it's just a day, I'm not sure. So we think we found the statue. Uh, I'm going to try and walk across the road without getting run down. Uh, but it's on the edge of like a nice park and uh, yeah, basically, I don't know what it's all about, uh, but it looks pretty Soviet to me. You've got the star, you know, you've got, it's 1944, so the time scale should be right. I mean, pretty certain this is a Soviet statue. So yeah, definitely cool. So you've got these sort of, like, kind of uh, statues from the Soviet past that are dotted around various places in Bulgaria. So, so yeah, so there's still, you know, it's not like some countries where they sort of tore them all down. Um, this is definitely here, and it's actually quite big so you've got to kind of stand back and uh, <laughs> film it from a distance but yeah so you've got a Soviet statue right here in Russe what's that Rach? you got a Soviet cat there you go look that's a pretty big Soviet cat there 
Um, don't I think he's probably looking for a toilet. Yep, we'll leave him in peace. <laughs> Did sort of look a bit like that. Um, but yeah, basically this is a massive statue. Um, and it's the first big thing we've found so far, so apart from the building. But um, yeah, I mean, you've got to stand right back. Look, look, he's got like, he's got a flag and he's got like a hammer and sickle in the flag up there. So I'm guessing he's planting a flag here. I'm guessing it, it must like be like for the liberation of Rusay because I believe the Soviets liberated Rusay, um, you know, when they, when they were winning the war, uh, you know, ally, you know, part of the allies. And so, yeah, you've got a statue here, which is basically a full on, I think, commemoration of the liberation of Rusay. Um, I'm pretty confident that's what it is. It's pretty sunny, so I don't know if you see it at all angles, like, perfectly. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's probably the worst angle because this is the back of it. Now I'm going to go up and have a look at the writing. Um, Rachel's a bit more of an expert in uh, Cyrillic than me. I'm not the best at translating. But yeah, you've got like kind of very like, you know, it's quite a Soviet looking sort of scene there, isn't it? On the side of the statue, you got the massive star and it looks like the writing used to be red potentially. So there's a lot of little, there's kind of specks of red around it. So was that a red star at some point? I've definitely seen just red stars dotted about. Like, you know, we will try and get these places that we can remember seeing as we kind of pass them. They kind of blend into the background, but there's definitely a lot of Soviet um, stuff around still. So we'll see what we can find and what we can show you. Um, it's quite a nice little quest, really, looking for all this stuff. So. But yeah, look, pretty, pretty cool, pretty big statue that, so, yeah, so there we go. That's our first sort of really proper Soviet statue. We don't think this is Soviet either, but, um, yeah, it looks quite cool. I mean, it's a nice little area of Russe, really, you know, place we definitely don't visit that often. It's like a nice big open park. It's a bit like Sea Garden in Varna, isn't it? Very similar to Sea Garden in Varna. Anyway, we're sort of seeing the flaw in, our, in us doing this now. Basically, uh, on, on Bold and Bankrupt's channel, he tends to sort of know what he's talking about and he knows what's Soviet and what's not. And uh, we're, <laughs> we're sort of not finding necessarily everything that's Soviet. Some of the things we're sort of not sure. So, uh, you know, there's a bit more skill involved than you realise. But that statue we went past, that was definitely Soviet, it had a big star, so. But yeah, quite a nice area of the of the city, really. Nice sort of gardeny area, lots of grass. Tell you what, it is now basically the end of September and it is absolutely boiling. We've had like 30 odd degrees today. And um, if anything reminds us why we come here and why we sort of stay for the summer in in Bulgaria rather than sort of in the UK then this is definitely it because you just the summer lasts into um you know into the sort of like autumn almost like into November you know I, I think it'll still be warm all the way through October we're heading back shortly but um but yeah I mean it's you know it's lovely weather and you do tend to have mostly sunny days so just kind of reminds us why we do what we do really I suppose of course it's also for the beauty of the place and everything that you see nice cool little building there again I'm not sure this is Soviet but whether this park would have been you know would this have been a kind of Soviet thing you know would they have added that you know would they have had this park because it was for the people or you know I don't know um, not that there isn't parks in like say Vienna and London and places but yeah, quite cool, yeah. I mean, it's meant to be a video about Soviet stuff, but it, you know, Russe is a nice place, worth a visit. Um, and yeah, another little sort of cool garden area where you can get a beer. Pretty nice, isn't it? You know, and it's amazing because we, we just do not come to this part of Russe at all. Well, I think we've been here once since we've been here 10 years, really, isn't it? Yeah, and it wasn't very far, is it? Yeah, and it, yeah, I'm going to say that this is pretty cool, so... 
a nice area to have. Now, it sort of looks a bit more Soviet, but a statue here. Um, I can't be 100% certain, but it's got that kind of feel that it might be Soviet. I definitely think it could be lots of parks around here as well. So if you've got kids, some like pretty nice looking parks that look well kept. I'm just going to walk over into the middle of the grass. You can see that it's been pretty dry. Um, yeah, that to me looks like it could be Soviet. I don't know what it means or what it is about, but I would have thought that is a Soviet um, statue. You would say that's Soviet, Rach? Could be Soviet, that, couldn't it? Yeah, I think that looks very Soviet to me, personally. I'm putting that in the Soviet box. What do you reckon? Yeah, yeah that, that's going in the old Soviet box, that one. Definitely. Yeah, okay, another one to the list. That's Soviet. Um, now, I don't know about this fountain. There's a fountain over here. Um, let's just turn the camera around again. Uh, but yeah, there's a, there's a Soviet-style fountain. <laughs> now, I'm not, we're not sure. We don't know if this has been here more recently but I mean this feels like the place could have been here obviously during Soviet times so it's got a nice fountain I mean I tell you what it is that kind of day where I could jump in that and it looks like really clean and blue doesn't it, it looks amazing that looks like a nice that looks good that looks like a decent pool Emily don't go jumping in there <laughs> she's been given a balloon hasn't she by somebody yeah, they randomly just gave her a balloon. I don't know who it was. Like, I don't know what they were doing, whether it's like... Is it, is it like an Independence Day today? I think it might have been one of the Independence Days, maybe from the Ottomans. Uh, so it might be the day that Bulgaria has its independence. I'm not sure. I thought I read it the other day, but I don't know if it was a different day than now, so don't quote me on that. But I believe there was an Independence Day for... Um, independence from the Ottomans which I believe is something to do with the Russians as well so um, yeah really nice little fountain pretty sure it's not Soviet now but was it here in those times potentially I don't know um, that graffiti I don't think Soviet pretty sure that's not um, but I wonder if it's worth just having a little bit of a, more of a look through the park and seeing if we can just see anything that kind of is so because I, I would imagine if we found two things then we're probably going to find something else that's uh soviet round here but yeah there's definitely stuff about there's this you know it's like a you know a lot of these sort of ex-communist countries there's definitely still things about that that haven't been taken down and and in bulgaria they they you know talking to people in the village and stuff they they still seem pretty sort of proud of the Soviet times. Like, they're not, like, sort of... Yeah, they, 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 they kind of... You know, whether incorrectly or whether correctly or not, they, they, they seem to believe that it was a better time for them and that their lives haven't improved as much as um, you would have been believed, um, uh, would have to believe. But, um, yeah, it's... Yeah, you've got parks... And, you know, I don't know, is that a Soviet thing to have parks about for people? Maybe. But, yeah, it's not probably not been there since Soviet times, I wouldn't have thought. And I think that building probably isn't Soviet, but I don't know. It could be. It could be. There's a lot. There's a mix mash, of course. But, you know, Bulgarian wasn't wasn't always a Soviet country. You know, it, it, it would have had... It, I think it's had kings. I think it's had all different systems so it's not just primarily you know an ex-soviet country so there will be other phases of history uh, but yeah if we can just sort of see if we can find something else in this park that but it's, it's quite a sprawling park it's quite a nice park and um, there's quite a lot here so yeah you know it's it's, it's nice it's this Sort of reminds me a little bit of Bucharest and Vienna where there's quite a lot of park area for people to go out in and, you know, quite a lot going on. And Emily screaming in the background, <laughs> spoiling everyone's uh, day out in the park. So, yeah, I don't know if we're going to find much more. I don't know. Oh, a statue over there somewhere. If I can walk over to there. 
So the middle of that bit over, I don't think you'll pick it up until I get closer, but there's something else over there, right in the middle of the grass over there. And I might go and have a look at that. So a nice park there. And again, there's some sort of, um, there's some sort of, uh, you know, drinking or eating place next to it. Not sure if that would have been there in Soviet times or whether they would have, um, you know, just have had the park. Obviously it's quite a commercial thing now. They've got a lot of like kind of places where obviously you go in and you know, there's nice experiences in amongst the park, you know, for people to go and eat or drink. Now here's another statue over here. Now I don't know if this is Soviet or not, but we should take a look. There's definitely bits about, I mean, there's that building I was talking about. I wonder if, I don't think that's Soviet, but maybe it is. People might be able to say. Um, but here we go. There's another statue, sort of smaller um, little statue. And again, it's got that sort of look to it. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know. That looks more like ancient Greek or something kind of statue. But I don't know. Could be here since then in Soviet times. So I don't think that's, that may not be a Soviet statue. But anyway, yeah, I think, oh, there's another one over here. Again, I think this probably isn't anything to do with Soviet, um, you know, times, but maybe it's just in the park now. Maybe I've always been in the park because of course this park could have been around a lot longer than the Soviet times. And then maybe some of those things are still here and then they got added to, I don't know. And here we go, there's another, it's another statue and it's sort of more artistic, I would say, more sort of, I don't know, I'm not saying that it couldn't be Soviet, I'm not an expert, but there we go, it's another statue. There's that building again, again, I think it looks a bit more older to me, I've sort of seen similar things in Vienna, I think. Oh, sweating today and the sweat's running down into my eyes. Um, but yeah, nice park area, it's definitely cool. Um, I don't, again, I, this doesn't look particularly Soviet to me, this statue. I would have to say it isn't. I could be wrong, but for me that just doesn't look Soviet. That looks more like a sort of older time. Might be more modern, but I think it's like probably someone famous from Bulgaria. So, I don't know. I don't know if there's anything else in this park, but I think there's probably not. So I think we'll probably try and go to some other places where we believe that we know of Soviet things. See if we can bring those to you as well. Okay, we think this is a Soviet building that's next to the park. It's near the uh, Soviet statue we went to earlier. Rachel says she can see a hammer and sickle. Oh yeah, it's up there. So on the flag on the top of the building, it does look like there is a hammer and sickle. So this is potentially another Soviet building. I mean, there's a lot of tower blocks and um, that kind of things in Rusay anyway. So there's a lot of Soviet buildings. So like, you know, communist tower blocks, buildings. I mean, these are kind of, yeah, they, they sort of like hark back to a time before Soviet times, I think but they've obviously been made by Soviets to look a bit more older. But anyway, there's another one just on the edge of the park. So good parking around here as well, lots of space to be able to get your car in. Um, yeah, quite a nice area to come to actually in Russo. Lots of little park, uh, little like parts for the kids, lots of um, little cafes, you know, like outdoor cafes you can sit out in the sun. Absolutely amazing. Um, really nice little part of Rousseau to come and visit and um, yeah good job that we came and did this video on the last day really because I think it's made us realize the things that we're leaving behind when we go back to the UK and what we we're gonna miss actually and and this is one of the places that we visited a while ago but we never really came back to wasn't it and it's just yeah it's really pretty and really nice and got some nice sort of architecture about and some parks and some cafes so Right, we're going to head down and see if we can find some more. We were just heading out of Rousse at the end of the day. We went and got some shopping and we just thought, I'm sure we saw a train station. And um, 
this is it basically this is the train station I'm hoping I'm allowed to park here because um, I've just chucked the car in I can't see any signs about paying for parking but I just thought in sort of bold and uh, bankrupt style I might go and quickly have a look see if I can see what train station looks like um, I know he's pretty fond of going in train stations especially Soviet ones so is there any sort of details you know is this a train station I mean it looks pretty Soviet to me big grand buildings um, you know if I just come over here try and stand back a bit so I can sort of show you something Ruse Varna is that so that's like 1866 so potentially it's actually here before the Soviets I would have thought um, but let's just have a quick look see if we can see anything oh, hang on security guys just go into the car park um, but anyway let's have a quick look and uh, yeah this is the train station by the look of it I don't know if it's Soviet or not but um basically you can go off to uh, so Ruse there to uh, you can go to Gorna or Ravitsa um, there's to another stop in Ruse and Starazagora there and uh, Gabrovo which I think is near Veliko Ternovo uh, or, or Gorna or Ravitsa is definitely Gabrovo is a bit further on I think yeah so quite a grand building I don't know if it's Soviet, I'm guessing it's not. I'm guessing it predates that, possibly. Um, <laughs> dropping my glasses. Um, but yeah, it does look like it is. Yes, there's a ticket office. Ah, look, you can get to Buda Bucharest, Budapest, Vienna, Krakow, which is where we used to live. Um, pretty cool, Tsar Grab, quite a lot of places. Um, so yeah, quite a nice area. Let me just run up to the platform because I don't want to go too crazy because I don't know if someone's about to tow the car away with uh, Rachel and the kids in it. <laughs> but we've never been, never been in this train station before, so I think I'll go up and have a quick look, see what I can see. And yeah, look, quite a nice looking train station actually so yeah not bad at all I don't know if it's particularly Soviet sometimes you might pick things up on the camera later on that I didn't spot as I was running around but yeah nice looking train station it's obviously had some like, updated flooring and stuff done um, it's like one of those sort of low to the ground train station lines so um, the only thing is, I think if you get like a ticket to Bucharest, I think it takes like a few hours to get to Bucharest, but really, it's only like um, an hour or so, maybe less than an hour if the border's quiet, to drive there. So you can sort of see why people tend to drive around everywhere here. These trains don't run very well, don't run very fast, but I suppose you want a night train to somewhere, would be pretty cool. Um, you've got like, um, you know, you've got all the sort of station manager, traffic control manager, look, police over there. Uh, I want to get out of here before the police come and <laughs> start asking me questions about why I'm here, why I haven't got a ticket. Uh, but yeah, it's um, looks all right. I don't know how Soviet it is, but it is. I don't know. Looks pretty good to me. So. It's like a nice train station and it reminds me of my days of going on the night trains from like Poland to you know from Krakow on to Prague or Budapest and uh, Vienna we used to do that quite a lot because we had a we sort of lived in uh, Krakow for a little while and there's the places you can go to from here um, which is pretty cool so you know I definitely if if I had spare time, I would definitely be taking the night trains. I sort of seat in areas that you got. So I'd definitely be wanting to take those night trains across Europe again, but don't know if those are things we can do so much anymore. 
Uh, but here we go, going back outside now. Hopefully the car's not being towed away. <laughs> I saw like a, a cot um, van going along. It looked like somebody looking at, you know, the, I think they're like a security company. So I don't know if they were coming after the car. The car looks like it's still there. Doesn't look like Rachel is arguing or fighting a uh, clamp guy as we speak. So yeah, pretty nice building. Um, Let's go over here and take a view of it from from a bit further back so you can kind of see how big and grand it all is. But yeah, definitely, it's nice. I just have rocked up and I parked as well. I mean, I don't think in Doncaster I'd rock up and park very easily in the train station, you know, without being sort of chased out. Uh, but they do have a waiting area, but I don't think they would let you run off and do this. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, a big clock tower as well. It's like quite a grand station. Um, I'm guessing it must be the main Rousseau station. So yeah, not a bad place at all. Quite a nice looking train station really. But um, I don't think we've ever felt like we could go somewhere on a train from it, but who knows in the future, but uh, yeah. Definitely brought back some memories, uh, memories of the old night trains, and um, yeah, one of the reasons why we like watching uh, Bold and Bankrupt, I think, is that it goes on quite a lot of night trains and travels. You know, sort of brings back memories of us travelling around Europe, really. Although his tend to be a bit more Soviet than us. Um, although most of the places we went to probably were Soviet, actually. But anyway, yeah, looking pretty cool. Pretty happy with that. Pretty nice building, and. Uh, might have some Sovietness to it. Almost certainly there'll be bits of it, surely there are. Right. Yeah, just thought I'd stop off and show that. Okay, another place that we know of where we've seen Soviet things before um, is in the village of Svalenik. Uh, basically up here at this sort of, I think this is like the Koperatsia, um, which like I think again dates back to Soviet times. There's sort of an area, and there's a dog over there, so I need to be careful. Uh, I don't want to go too close. In fact, there's lots of dogs. <laughs> um, and basically, yes, it's the it's a copper out here. There's a there's a red star on the top of it. I'm not going to hang around too much because uh, I don't want the dogs to come and get me. Um, they're over there. They look relatively friendly, but quite big, sort of Karakachan looking dogs. But yeah, basically you've got like a sort of Soviet star up there, but you've got the Bulgarian flags now, of course. And of course it would have been anyway here, because I believe they just had the Bulgarian flag as normal. Uh, but yeah, there's a Soviet star. And so I believe that's the Koporatsia. And I think like in villages and even in our own village, there's like a kind of, um, air, you know, there's a company that's basically running the fields and things like that, I believe, and fixing things and they... They have sort of, you know, materials and they do various things. I'm not an expert in what they do, but, but yeah, so you can actually, yeah, so they've still got that mechanism going on, even like, you know, which probably dates back to Soviet times. But yeah, you can see the star up there. Um, and I'm getting, I don't know what that says, rem, remonta, pa, I'm not sure, raz, some, rab, I don't know. I'm not sure what it says, but, um. It may be like mechanics or I think I think it's the Koperatsia. But um but yeah, so there's another one. There's another so there's a red star up there. I get the feeling it's red and that it keeps getting repainted, so I think it is kept up to date. So although it's an old sign, I think they keep it up to date. So basically yeah, there's another Soviet thing. So there are Soviet things everywhere. Uh dotted around Bulgaria. They're still in place, they're not like you know they haven't completely got rid of anything but yeah quite a nice village this some nice sort of like cliffs if you like right there's caves up there as well so like you know prehistoric caves i think where like yeah like people used to live in the caves so it's quite a nice village actually it's one of the sort of like nice looking villages in a valley and um yeah it's one of our sort of like favorite little villages really in bulgaria but anyway, yeah, so there is a red star above that Koperatsia gate. 
and um, yeah, we're going to get out of here before the uh, dogs come and get us or the locals, but the locals are probably quite friendly, I would imagine. Yeah, so another thing that we found. Our quest for Soviet things continues. Um, we're now the next day from where we were before. Um, and we're in a little town called Opica. And it looks like, I think it's painted, but it's a kind of like, I don't know if that's a mosaic or, I guess it's not a mosaic because it's not tiles, but, so there's a kind of like Soviet sort of like, I don't know, it's like a, it is like in the style of a mosaic, but it's painted on. I think in Bulgaria it tends to be painted on rather than in Russia and places where it seems to be sort of tiles. So there's definitely tiles here, but we don't know where. Uh, but anyway, that is, we think, Soviet. <laughs> so that's something. Um, it's quite a cool little place. Everybody sat outside. Um, you've got like kind of nice little cafes and things. I really do like, I do like the little towns here because... They do have like these little sort of outdoors, al fresco y sort of, you know, little cafes. There's real cafe culture, some nice, you know, even in the smallest towns, they, they kind of keep the centre really nice. And um, there you go, look, this is something that you see across Bulgaria actually, um, is they've kind of put these like nice sort of colourful town names and village names. It's, it's kind of, they're trying to brighten up everywhere. Wow, now this looks pretty Soviet. This looks Soviet to me. So yeah, so there's a sort of like statue here. Um, it's a bit difficult because the sun is kind of beating down on us, so I'm gonna try and go at an angle. Um, but that to me looks pretty Soviet. Would you say that's Soviet? I think that's Soviet. Right, I'm gonna go from a different angle, but the sun is just, because it's sort of morning, it's the angle of the sun. So I'm gonna try and stand in its shadow where the sun can't see, if you like. <laughs> and um, see if we can sort of see. But yeah, that looks very brutalist and very Soviet to me. Um, as, so that's in the center of the town here in Opica. And if you look over at the building, it's gonna be difficult to film that because of the sun. I think you can see a kind of, I don't think it's, I think it has got like sort of older Bulgarian stuff on there, but it may be in the style of a Soviet uh, kind of carving or you know, again, it's more painted on, I would say, than than the, than things we've seen in Bold and Bankrupt's videos, where they've got like tiled things. Uh, but yeah, this is this is pretty Soviet here, I would say. Um, and uh, let me just check. I want to make sure, looking at the camera, that I can actually see the statue. Stand back a bit. I mean, if I come too far forward, you won't be able to see it. Um, and if I go too far back, the sun will block it out. But that is definitely it there. And it's very, very striking. It's very sort of, look at the power of the people here, I think. Quite Soviet, I would say. I reckon that's a, I reckon that's a Soviet um, statue there. Um, you know, and this is a very little town. It's not a very big place. And um, yet, you know, they take a lot of pride in the place. Um, this is like the main town building, the municipality building, and so this is where you like come to pay your taxes, that kind of thing. Um, you can do a lot of that online these days, obviously, but you know you can come in here as well, pay your house and car taxes. Uh, but yeah, look, I mean, I would say that's sort of based on older Bulgarian history. I wouldn't say that's Soviet history, but I think that it is, um, again, I'll check the camera view so I can see, but I would say that it is, uh, what would you say? I would say that it's kind of done in a sort of Soviet style, potentially, but it is depicting stuff from before. Yeah, and you've got like kind of cool, um, uh, yeah, you've got the cool, you know, lettering that's behind it. But yeah, they keep these places really nice and the weather's always really nice. Even, you know, we're getting on into autumn now. It's October next week, basically. And um, the weather's gorgeous. People are sat outside, they're in t-shirts. There's cafes. It's just, yeah, you, you can tell why people come here, I think. I mean, it kind of, you know, reminds us of why we've come here. And I think absolutely, you know, it kind of reaffirms why you did it and that you did the right thing. Um, so yeah, so Opica, 
you know they've got like this whole history of the place um and actually it's in english and uh the, its name has not changed since it existed according to folk etymology originated from from a queue because the settlement was as long as a queue that's interesting yeah so you've got all the history you know you've got it, it explains what each of the buildings are um what what's going on i mean that's cool isn't it it's like a kind of a very sort of like it's not a well-known town but they've got all this sort of hitch history you've got like about crepture which is a a village nearby coins that have been found there uh i think that's galama Gridishta. yes um that's a village there and then you've got um gacha novo uh lublin it's showing the villages of the area basically Gorsko Blanovo. Um, so you've got like kind of a little about each of the villages in this little area that Opaka is responsible for. And there we can see the statue again from an angle where the sun isn't kind of beating down on it. Um, I am going to flip the camera around again. And uh, I think we get a nice little view of that. But yeah, some, some more Soviet stuff. So we are finding Soviet things on our little quest to go around looking at Soviet stuff. But yeah, all good, right. Well, I think we're gonna head to another area now because it's quite a small area, but we're gonna go and see if we can find some more. Okay, we've come to a city called Razgrad and this is like the city park. Um, there are some Soviet chairs, I think. They look pretty Soviet looking. Table and chairs. I don't know if it's all Soviet or whether that, that looks a bit like it's been replaced, but they look pretty sort of ancient you know, sort of old style chairs. But yeah, what we found is um, a pretty big, I mean, what is it, right? Statue or monument or like a monument. Um, and what's it for? Do we know? Uh, Rachel's going to look that up while I go and take a look at it. But basically it's this, it's this massive thing in the distance here. Um, and it looks pretty Soviet to me. So um, this is also... Um, in this park, they have like the festivals and stuff every year, um, where they have like fairground rides, sort of more of a, I don't, I don't know if that was around in Soviet times, maybe it was. Uh, and um, yeah, so it's a pretty, pretty brutal monument, I would say. Not sure what it is yet, but Rachel's gonna try and look up what it's about. Uh, but yeah, it's sort of very Soviet styled and it looks like this is like marble or something. The stone so you know probably quite pricey and there's a few other sort of little monuments next to it and uh, yeah so there's still there's quite a lot of uh, there's a lot of bits here this looks like this is probably the most Soviet thing we found I would have thought and it's in a in a city called Razgrad um, which is a nice little city not far from our house um, we're sort of not far from Rousse either and uh, there we go they're looking pretty cool statues there's a horse I think over there or something yeah it looked pretty Soviet looking to me they look very Soviet like so yeah I mean there's stuff like this dotted everywhere you know and even some of the stuff that is kind of newer uh, let me just, I want to flip the camera around. So there's your massive uh, monument, which Rachel's going to tell us what it's all about. Um, she's quite far back because she's not as mobile with the pram. <laughs> but uh, that's a pretty mad Soviet style um, statue, isn't it? Or monument or what have you. Let's go and have a look. I mean, these are massive gargantuan structures really um, actually razgrad has got like a lot of um, history like Roman history and there is like a whole kind of museum area called Abritus which is quite good it's worth a visit um, someone's drawn a cock on it don't think that's Soviet um, yeah so it's pretty big I'm going to go underneath it just to sort of show you what's underneath, let's hope it's well built 
It looks quite new. It doesn't look like it was built in uh, in uh, Soviet times, but maybe it was. Maybe it was built in the style of, I don't know. We've got like these sort of very Soviet looking writing on the on here, packet of fags in the middle there. Uh, cigarettes, English slang, obviously. Um, yeah, it's um, got some kids. They're not very Soviet, I don't think. Don't think they were around in Soviet times. But yeah, very friendly little locals as well. That's one thing I'd say about here. I've never been anywhere and felt like threatened or worried about anybody. And yeah, look, I think they're going up on some sort of. Is that like a skateboard park type thing over there next to the Soviet monument? But no, I've done. I've, I've, Everywhere we go in Bulgaria, we've been to places, and um, I tell you what, there doesn't ever feels like there's a rough area. Do you know what I mean? So everyone's always friendly, welcoming. You know, always yeah, always nice people. But yeah, this is your. Uh, this is pretty cool. I think Rachel is making her way over to us. Um, go and have a look at those other statues over there. Um, but yeah, oh, and over there that you can see. In the distance, maybe you can see some like floodlights. That's like Ludogorets Razgrad, which is like a you know popular football team from the city, and they were in like the Champions League, I think, not long ago. Um, but I think they had to play their games in Sofia. But yeah, pretty, yeah, not a bad little city. It's quite a small place, but you know, right, Ems. What is it then? What? Memorial complex to fighters against fascism and capitalism. Yeah, so some sort of complex. It's a memorial to basically people who fought against fascism and capitalism. Um, of course, now this being a capitalist country. Um, was it built then in Soviet times then? Yeah, so that has been there since Soviet times. I'll tell you what, it looks brand new to me. Um, I don't know. 1981. I'll tell you what, it's done well. I've seen some buildings from 1981, like crumbling with concrete cancer and stuff. That thing's still doing really well. Some other statues here, or monuments. And um, yeah, very Soviet looking. Yeah, definitely Soviet style. I'll tell you what, it's hot today. It's really hot out here, really sunny. Um, not having a hat again, I'm probably gonna get, <laughs> get a bit of sunburn. Um, but this is kind of the last hurrah for us because this is our last weekend um, in Bulgaria. So next week we'll be heading back to the UK. And um, so we thought we'd get out and we'd have a look at like Soviet stuff and, you know, just kind of take a look around a bit again and sort of remind ourselves why we keep coming here, I think. And uh, yeah, some nice statues and monuments and wow, that is just a phenomenal... Um, that is a phenomenal uh, monument, isn't it? I mean, it's massive. I think that's the biggest one we've seen by far. Bigger than the uh, soldier in Russe, I think. Um, and it's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. I mean, if we, we might see some more stuff. I don't know. This will possibly be the last thing that we see before we head back to the UK and begin the drive back. But yeah, it is a massive thing, basically, a massive statue. And uh, it's really, really, really quite striking. I mean, I'm not sure exactly what it is. I guess it's like the massive struggle against capitalism and fascism or something like that, I'm guessing. Like they needed something so big, so impressive. Um, you've got a whole like big area in front of it. Probably the sun is blowing the camera out a bit. There's like kind of a whole big area. Um, still sort of kept to a degree. I think there's still sort of like got roses and things here. You know, it's not probably not the most well kept area in the city, but it's definitely not being left to fall into ruin, I would say. But yeah, pretty impressive. And, uh, yeah, I think that will probably be the last Soviet thing that we see before I have to like walk this way because the sun is absolutely belting down 
on us. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've seen quite a few little Soviet things. If we see anything else, we'll uh, add it on. But I think that's it, isn't it? It's probably the last thing that we, unless we find something else in the park. But it's a pretty big one to end on. Yeah, pretty cool. Okay, so we thought we were finished, but we think uh, we found what was probably once a Soviet zoo. Um, so this is like a city zoo in Razgrad. Um, there's no payment, it's just in the park along with the monuments. Um, so it's free to come to. Um, they've basically got um, quite a lot of stuff, I think. So this is, I think, pheasants, is it? Or peacocks, sorry. Yeah, peacocks. I don't think they've got anything in English. Um, but they've got information about them. So this is like a sort of free zoo. That is just in, um, in the park. And um, I don't know if it's got, you know... I don't know what the record is like or anything like that or if it's like good conditions or um, but yeah they've got like ducks and uh, that's chicken I think there's pictures of chickens there um, and pheasants they do have pheasants and pigeons and um, so I think this would have been here in Soviet times now I believe yes they do they have a lion so there's a lion here that's pretty cool there he is, or she is. What if it's a boy or a girl? I would have thought that's a female. Yeah. So they've got a lion. So they've actually got a lion, and you don't have to pay. Um, looks pretty secure, <laughs> so no worry about it. Uh, it's obviously sponsored by some companies. But yeah, basically you've got got like a little zoo, basically that you. Um, that is uh, in the centre of the. It's in the park, basically, and it looks like it's free. You know, it's free. We haven't paid to come in. We just literally walked past and saw it here. Um, I don't know if there's anyone in this enclosure. I think there might be. No, oh, I don't know. No, I think there's no one in there. Um, and there we go. So yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, there's like a. Yeah. So you basically, it's a free zoo in the park. And we think it was probably here in Soviet. I mean, I don't. I would imagine it's been updated since then. Um, but I don't know if that was a common thing in in like the former Soviet Union or aligned countries, whether they had these sort of things in the in the park for free. Maybe that's a hangover. But there's the lion. It's a female lion, right? Yeah, lioness. Yeah, and I think there's a. I think there's a male in the inside. Yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a male. I'll just bring the camera up so you can sort of see, but I think there's a male in the thing. Right, let me flip the camera because that might be easier for me to see what you can see. Um, yeah, so you've got essentially female lion who looks a bit like she is annoyed with me being here. She may be being inbred. Apparently, there was like illegal inbreeding. Illegal inbreeding. Oh, I don't know. Oh, really? Well, she doesn't look like she's annoyed because she's inbred. I think she might just be annoyed in general. Um, but there, there's a there's a male lion in there, and there's a female lion in there. So it's definitely lions. Yeah. So, yeah, so like kind of city park basically with with lions in it. <laughs> Emily, it's a lion. What do you think? It's a lion. It's a lion, yeah. It's like a big cat, isn't it? Really big cat. It's bigger than you. It's bigger than you. Look at Lolly. Look at Lolly. Let's have a look at Lolly. Lolly is not that big and he doesn't seem to have ever got any bigger and this one has got a lot bigger <laughs> so emily that's what the babies look like like lolly lolly is like a baby lion see the lion yeah 
So yeah, I don't know. Maybe it was here in Soviet times. Maybe it wasn't, but 1960. So yeah, Soviet times. So they have got information about it. Oh, and that's actually another thing to say that there's a. Um, it, basically, it's a lion is called a lev, isn't love. it? Love. love. But that's what the currency is named after, isn't it? Lev. Yeah. Lev. So the cur the currency is named after lion, I think. So that's where the name lev comes from. So yeah. It, and they call it Pantera Leo, which I'm guessing is the like kind of Latin name, is it? Ooh, mm -hmm. it's just showing its teeth to me then. Yeah. Hello. I'm not your enemy. Hello. Yeah, it was. It was. It was kind of like had its. I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was showing its teeth to me or if it was just. It was just yawning, probably, or. You know. Yeah, look, it's yeah, it's playing with its teeth. I think it's just cleaning itself. It's a shame you can't sort of see it more clearly, but but yeah, so got lions there. Um, but yeah, free zoo in the middle of Razgrad, and has been here since Soviet times. Rachel's looked that up, so yeah, you know that's quite a sort of you know it's quite a different thing for us, isn't it? We've never you know in the UK you wouldn't just have like a I mean I've seen birds maybe in a park but I've never seen like a lion just in a local park uh, for everyone to go and see so whether you think it's a good idea or not yeah the biggest thing we've seen is rabbits I think but then usually they're just running around um, but whether you whether you think it's a good idea or not um, it obviously is a Soviet or was a Soviet zoo so I think that is the last Soviet thing we're going to find. I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so anyway, right. We are going to head back towards the car.